Hey, what's going on with you guys? Thank you for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Cleveland. So if you notice behind me, I'm back at Exotic Aquarium, y'all. I am not in Mexico, even though I got on this nice little Hawaiian shirt. I'm over here at Exotic Aquarium in Sacramento, California, y'all. We gonna get another fish today, man. You know, I told you I had another surprise for you. I told you I wanted to grab something else. So we about to go in here and get a Queen Angel. We just got that Emperor Angel. Looks great in the tank. But you know what? It'd look better if we had that queen up in there too. So let's get on up in here and, uh, and grab this fish. All right, so we back. Our options are this one right here. I know you probably can't hear me, but the options are this one right here, or this one right here. My bae said this one right here instead. Let's check the health of this guy. He's looking pretty good, thick. Let's check his tank mate. Make sure he's not sick. He's looking a little skinny, but he's not sick. All right. So this is the chosen one right here, y'all. This is the chosen one right here. Check out the clown trigger, y'all. Check out the clown trigger. Another beautiful, magnificent fox face rabbit fish. Another naso tang. We have a naso already. We don't eat that. Look at. Guys, if you know what this fish is, if you can ID this fish, please drop that down in the comment section. I don't know what this guy is but none of the fish in this tank right here are for sale. So Look at this beautiful regal angel right here. Look at that regal angel bag. Guys, here's another one right here. If you can identify this fish right here. Oh, I don't know if the blue if the blue light is uh is doing him any justice, but he's really red. Red with some white and some darker color on the top of him. Some of you guys might know right off back what he is. If you do, drop that down in that comment section. Look at these coral. Look at this fourth generation S300 scammer right here. This S300 skimmer right here, look at that. Huge. Got some clams. I really like that coral right there. fish right here. I don't think I'm ready for another line fish yet. Got a beautiful dog face puffer. About six inches. That one is dope. That one is dope. It's an angel. That one is dope. Yeah, I really like that one. Got the Harlequin right there. We're not doing no more Harlequin tusks though. Flower horn. Nice. Oh. All 
my guy, so we just did a little damage. We spent about 444 bucks, but we got a nice amount of stuff. We got two fish, we got some more pond plants, we got some sand, we got some driftwood. Oh, we got stuff. Anyway, so long ride back, catch with the house. Alright guys, so we're back at the house. As you can see, I got comfortable, so no more uh, vacay. So <laughs> here's the water hyacinth that I was telling you about. These are much taller, so I'm hoping that these guys don't eat it. The last ones, unfortunately, the turtles ate it. Um, I got a little uh, idea from what I've seen at the pet store. So basically, they had some styrofoam to cut a hole in it, so I guess it won't move around as much. or Nonetheless, basically I'm about to do the same thing. So basically it has some styrofoam, looks like a donut. You put the water high something in there. I'm hoping if I make the hole small enough, the turtles won't be able to just readily eat the, um, the bulbs of these water hyacinth. They did not eat the roots. Roots are still intact, but um, we're gonna try that. I also bought some more sand, like I said I would do. Uh, so we're gonna raise the sand bed just so they could actually burrow in there and you know bury themselves like they do in their natural environment. If you notice, it's a little cloudy. I gotta do a water change. I didn't have any water conditioner, which I have now, so I'll make sure that um, I do a water change on this guy, and maybe I'll probably do about a 95 to 100% water change on it, probably 100, because when I do 100, the water's crystal clear, lasts longer, things like that. And then if you also notice behind me, I have another piece of driftwood. I couldn't leave the store without buying this. Um, I didn't know where I was gonna put it at, but as you can see, the scape on this tank is a little bit different than what it was previously. I took out the big piece of driftwood, put it in there. I think it looks a whole lot better. They love that. They like to try to go under, etc. So I'm thinking I might either put this in there or I don't know. I just didn't want to let this go without buying it. So I'm going to uh, make sure I soak it, clean it, water all it, find a place for it. So that's that. Another item I bought. It was a seaweed clip. So I traditionally have the ones that you just put in there, put the seaweed in there, put the algae in there, you clamp it, they bite it, it's, they yank it off, it floats around a tank. This right here is so much better. You put it in there and basically you keep it confined within the netting and then they, they, they pick at it. So that way it won't just break apart and just start floating around a tank, going, uh, get trapped inside of your uh, filter intake, etc. So good deal on that. Next, we have a Cynodonis catfish. Not quite sure what, which, which one it is. The guy didn't know at the pet store that made it a little difficult, but he found a price for it. This guy right here was about 29 bucks, nice size. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna put him over there because this tank right here has multiple catfish that you, you see a little aggression, but it is what it is, they probably wanna eat. Um, so. <laughs> I'm probably going to put them over there because I have like three different um, catfish, maybe four in here. I think it's four. I have one that I don't know. I've had for like four years, still t still tiny. And then I have um, three of the uh, spotted Raphael catfish. So I put it in there and uh, make sure I do a, a good acclimation on this guy. And if he gets bigger, if he gets a lot bigger, then you see him, you see him uh, move around his back. Mm -hmm. Then I will go ahead and put him in a 240. But... Uh, yeah, he's gonna go inside that tank right there. We don't have any catfish in here, so whenever I feed and anything hits the bottom, the turtles are real funny. They're real picky eaters. So they like to eat tilapia. They don't 
eat anything else. I can't stand it. I've been trying. I starved them for a little bit, probably about a week. They still didn't give in. They only want to eat tilapia. Um, though, but I take that back. They will eat the prepared foods I made, the beef heart, but I need to come up with a prepared frozen food just for turtles because I don't want to feed them beef heart. I don't think that should be in their diet. And they don't really eat like the real seafood, seafood, like the seafood medley, like the scallops, um, the, the octopus, the calamari. They don't eat that. So I will come up with one of those, uh, you know, foods that I prepare and, and freeze. And then when I do, of course, I make a video on it like I always do. So let me get back to the video. So that's this guy right here. Wait, before you do that, let me check on Carter. Be right back, guys. All right, guys. So we are back. And now, like I said I wanted to get, we have this queen angelfish, guys. They charge a little penny for this guy. Um, it is what it is. We wanted them. So this guy came in at 280 bucks. And, uh... I was real cautious on making sure that they didn't have any kind of ick diseases or anything like that. I mean, you obviously can't always be 100% sure, but I did my best to make sure that I got the healthiest fish. And again, fingers crossed, the other guy is cool, no issues whatsoever, so happy about that. So I do the same thing. I put this guy inside of the tank. Look at Carter right there. <laughs> like, I want to help that. I want to help that. So um, put him in a bucket add a little bit of that copper safe with it and then um get this guy into the tank so i won't bore you guys with that process you've seen it a thousand times so uh once i get these guys into their homes i'll grab this camera and i'll see you guys in a minute all right guys so uh it's been a little while we got the catfish in here so remember i said i was gonna put them in the 125 over there i decided to put them in here i put them over there and you know, we got some aggressive fish over there. We got aggressive fish over here too, but those are bigger fish. So he was looking a little stressed over there. So I put him in here. He's happy here, guys. I mean, I cannot believe it. Um, he's swimming right there. Lights are off because it's really late. It's like 11.30 right now at night. So, um, but you can see him. So let me just stand back for a second so you can really just appreciate the coloration on this guy, his size, everything. Yeah. So he's probably like, like four and a half, five inches. Beautiful Cynodonis catfish. I don't know what type it is. I mentioned that earlier. So if you know for certain, please drop that down in the comment section. Uh, so um, I spent a lot of time getting it set back up. I put in the other um, bag of sand, added in some boulders, give them some little hiding spaces. I put the plants up top. This is what I see them doing at the pet store. Putting, cutting the, um, the styrofoam, putting the hole in the center, and then dropping it in. I think that's going to be a solution so the turtles cannot just eat all of these bulbs right here. They were basically munching bulbs right there. So, you know, this is this was actually two different um, sets of water hyacinth about this size. And now as you see, we just have two little bulbs left, one of each. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen with these over here, but, um, I think this setup looks a lot better. We have the driftwood over here off in the corner. Um, we have all these massive boulders in there just so they can do a little climbing if they want to. But um, yeah, guys, they've already buried themselves in this thick sand substrate. So yeah, much, much better than what it was. A very big improvement on these guys. So um, once it clear up tomorrow, We'll go ahead and do a little montage on this tank. We'll also do a little montage on this guy so you can take a look at our little Cynodonis. Um, I have the driftwood right here, basically waterlogging in this, uh, in this garbage can. So I know you guys are wondering what's going on with the angelfish. So uh, lights are off, it's pretty late. We can take a look. First, let me hit the lights over here and then we'll go take a look at them. There he or she is right there, looking good. Chilling next to Bart. So, like I said, it's late. We're not gonna spend too much time on these guys and then show them the emperor right here next to, right there. There's the emperor. So, 
we're not gonna spend too much time on this right here. We're gonna wrap up this video. All right, guys, so that's about it for this evening. Tomorrow, we have two things we need to do. I have a tank that I'm setting up for someone doing a favor. Um, she owns a little tanning salon. Um, she has a 110, 120 gallon tank that's been out of commission for quite a while under the tank sump, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I told her I'd do a favor, get that bad boy cleaned out, back up and run it, and bring it back to its beauty. So uh, she's letting me pick out the fish and all of that. Um, so I will take you along for the ride. It won't be the full video because it's gonna be a few hours getting that done. But um, I wanna make sure that I bring you along for that. So tomorrow we gotta do that. And then I'll run this montage for you on all these tanks or the tanks that really just got the new additions and then the turtle tank. So um, that's it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.